So at the end of the last episode, Lanayru said that uh, if we came back in a little while, he'd have a little surprise for us. But you can actually like go back to him right away. You don't even have to leave the area or anything. And if you do that, he actually makes special mention of it too. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yep. In actual fact, I think I've never seen that before. I think I actually did go away and then came back later. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Because this, is, this isn't really like a story thing or anything, it's more like it's a side bit. Hmm. Oh, I'm in a game. I mean, yeah, sure. You didn't, I mean, you've not been very specific about what it is, but yeah, sure. <laughs> You have to, or you're gonna have to re-experience every single time you've gotten hit in this game all at once. Oh no. Here it is, Link, the ultimate challenge. It's the original Zelda on the NES. Whoa. No, it actually, uh, he gives you a choice between revisiting the Silent Realms and doing a boss rush. And pretty much the only reason to go back to the Silent Realms is this point, at this point is if you need to collect more Dusk Relics. Mm -hmm. uh, which we don't need to anymore, uh, but the boss rush does actually have a very one very good reward tied to it or two actually And that's what we're gonna go get. I was wondering if you were gonna do this You you bet I couldn't leave something like this out. Yeah, that's true Well, I have been like wondering pretty much since the start of the LP if you were gonna cover the boss rush or not <laughs> But of course I couldn't say anything. No, I mean I could have said something and then you could have just put a children's nursery rhyme over it but <laughs> yeah so for the first fight uh, in the boss rush he lets you pick whatever boss you want of the ones that you fought so far hmm and let's let's start off with something a little easy and for every single boss he also has like a, a tiny comment about it Girim is in fact a bit creepy. He is a little off-putting. Hmm. Huh. Ah. No health potions. Nope. You have to go through it all in one go. Let's do it. Let's do it. So, it's a really standard boss rush, there's really, like, nothing in particular to say about it. Mm -hmm. Other than, you're prohibited from using your pouch items, and you can only get, uh, use the special items, like the items that are on the B slot, that you would have collected at this point. Yeah. But you do get to use whatever shield, uh, you have with- you had with you when you go into the boss rush. And also, you actually get to use, like, your current sword. Yeah. Instead of also being forced to use the sword that you had at the time as well. Man, that would suck. Yeah. And you'll find that a lot of these early bosses die really quickly because you have a sword that does like eight times as much damage. Is that 27 seconds? Yes. Yeah, that's pretty quick for that first boss uh, right. <laughs> yeah, <fight>. exactly. Hmm. <laughs> And every time you beat a boss for the first time in the boss rush, he gives you 50 rupees. And every time you beat one of your own personal records, he also gives you 50 rupees. Nice. Yep. You bet. Give me that shield. I need it. Uh, one thing that does make the um, the boss rush a little less uh, like threatening, I guess, or a little less scary, yeah. is that all the bo the boss arenas that had hearts in them in the original fights still have them. Oh, that's good. Yeah, which means that there's only like two or three bosses that you can't heal in, or at this point, at least. If it was a real boss rush, they would have took those out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or should I say a boss rush from any other game? Yeah. 
So, like I said, it's pretty much just the boss fights again, so I don't think I don't think we need to watch me play a boss rush. It's just it's just you beat a bunch of bosses in a row. Um, but of course I am going to show off the two rewards you get at a certain point. Hmm. If you beat four bosses in a row, um, that's where you get your first special reward. Basically, like, uh, all the reward tiers in between are either just rupees or getting a treasure. But at, uh, number four, you get your first unique reward. Which we're gonna see right here. Or I think he already said it, but it's a piece of heart. Yeah, that's kind of good that it, uh, if you want to get, like, all the heart, heart pieces, you gotta do at least half the boss rush. Yeah. Um, one thing that's unfortunate is that uh, your rewards don't stack, so if you want mm. the heart piece, you have to quit after the battle. And because we're getting two different rewards, we have to go through the- we ha or I had to go through the boss rush twice. And this is the- oh, okay. here's the reward you get for beating eight bosses in a row. Oh yeah, give me the shield. I think that's a bit- I think the shield's a bit more fabulous than 2,000 rupees, yeah. my dude. <laughs> well, there it is! Whoa! It's the classic heal Hylian shield. Holy shit! Hidden super late into the game behind a side quest, how about that? Really was in the game this whole time. Whoa. So, the Hylian Shield, uh, it cannot be broken. It has a really large health bar, but even if something hits against it, it doesn't actually take any damage from it. And also, it looks super nice. It does. It's got a really nice, deep blue hue to it. Mm. Uh, I don't know. It reminds me of something, but I don't know what it is. It reminds you of... the Hylian Shield from <laughs> every other Zelda game? I guess so. So, one last thing before we leave this area. Uh, after you cure uh, Laneru, if you turn the Time Shift Stone back off, uh, his skeleton disappears. Oh my goodness, we altered the past! Oh, which to me, I guess, indicates that at some point he peaced out and, may and found somewhere else to live after the desert went bad. Or I guess the Laneru region went bad and turned into a desert. Hmm. Hey buddy, are you gonna tell us your name or...? Nope. So rude. How? Oh. Maybe he's ashamed of it. Maybe he's called like Ronald McDonald. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. It's probably some variation of Goron though. Yeah. It's, it's we've had Gorko and Golo. I think it might be Gondo. <laughs> So, this is another minigame. We've kind of done it before, but now we can do it for fame and fortune. You can go through two different tracks, the one that runs between here and the middle stop, and then the one that runs between the middle stop and the ship bay. Hmm. And if you do the one that runs between the start and the middle stop, uh, if you do it within 30 seconds, you get a rare treasure. But if you do the second track within uh, 65 seconds, you get a, really a, a unique treasure. And that's what we're going to do right now. Ooh. And I'll tell you this much. Uh, if you're going to... For those of you who are playing along at home... Yeah. Um, before you try doing this minigame, always recalibrate the Wiimote from uh, the item, from the inventory. Yeah. Because I don't know what it is about this part, but it really doesn't seem to react properly a lot of the time. And another thing, um, if you want to get this done under 65 seconds, I'm pretty sure you have to take the right path there. Because if you take the path on the left, you don't come in with enough speed on this part, and then you'll spend like ages before you can speed up again. Recalibrating my Wiimote was something that I did pretty frequently when I played this game, honestly. I don't think I ever actually did it. Not even for this part, because at the time I didn't even realize that that was the thing you could do mid-game. <laughs> I think the problem I had though was like sat too, too close to the television. Maybe. That's where my Wii was, man. It was in- it was in my room. And I had to sit, like, right next to the screen. 
that does sound quite annoying. Yeah, there wasn't like it. There wasn't really. It. There was enough room to back up and like you know swing around, swing the Wiimote around, but don't break the vase like that one guy does <laughs> on the yeah. screen. Anyway, that was the final heart piece. Now we have all twenty hearts. Why wasn't the careless guy from the Wii menu? Why didn't he make it into Smash? God, Dex, you could at least try to sound a little excited about the what? fact that we got all the hearts. I, I'm, I'm over the moon. I'm ecstatic about this. Great. Oh, it's good to see that the shield that served us so well is basically going in the trash. Yeah. Um, so you may have noticed it just now, but I'm going to be doing some very aggressive cutting around in this episode. Yeah. Because, uh, we're, we're, we're near the end of the story, but there is still a ton of side quests that we haven't done yet. And I want to try to get through as many of them as possible in this video. So there's nothing left for the end of the game. Yeah. Makes sense. You don't want to be at the final boss when you still have to get, like, Billy's diary back from <laughs> somewhere, yeah. I don't know. Funnily enough, Billy's last diary entry is, Dear Diary, I'm just gonna fucking throw this off the edge of Skyloft, I don't give a sh- <laughs> Damn. You didn't even finish writing the entry, he was too <laughs> impatient. Well, maybe he ended up regretting it in the end. Maybe. Oh, yeah, sure, okay, we can. Alright, just give me your gratitude crystals and we'll move on. Yep. Oh! What the- uh, uh. No, don't do that. Um, I would like to point out that the fortune teller's uh, eye, like eye blinking animation, has more frames to it than any other character in the game. God. All the other characters get like two or three, but his is like five or six frames long. Yeah, it's because his eyes are so fucking big. Yeah. How sultry. Did you say robot? Oh no! Please don't be talking about how I think you're talking about. I'm sorry, Dex. Oh, no! <laughs> God. <sighs> if there's any consolation, uh, this episode will be the final episode to have Scrapper in it. Sort of. The true antagonist of Skyward Sword. Yeah. <laughs> I was about to say we could say please, and he did. <laughs> <laughs> He's not so bad after all. Yeah, okay. So side quest, no, side quest number one. We have to find a crystal ball, and the hint we were given is that it is at a temple at the top of a mountain. Now that already narrows it down quite far, mm. but just to be sure. Yep, yeah. that checks out. Definitely seems to be where I would expect it. I mean, maybe there's a temple on a mountain that we just haven't seen yet. Yeah, in all three areas of this game. Well, I, I which mean... Which we've thoroughly explored. There's <laughs> one on that side, but not on the other, so I guess that's where his old one came from. Jeez, we're just gonna... We're just gonna steal it! We're just gonna take it from a sacred temple. That seems wrong. Eh, I mean, we already, like, we blew up a lot of stuff in this temple already. I mean, yeah, but... You know, that's structural damage. At least we can leave it looking nice. <laughs> well, the, there was this orb. There was no orb on the other side, so now we're just gonna have it look more proper because both mm. sides are gonna be the same. Actually, I think the other side might not even have a pillar on it anymore. Oh. So Scrapper comes down and just yanks the whole pillar off. <laughs> that does seem very in character for him. Yep. We're gonna be seeing a lot of Scrapper in this episode. God fucking damn it. <laughs> Scrapper, you are such a piece of shit. Agreed. You're nothing without me, Scrapper. <laughs> Honestly, I think Link could have probably carried this crystal ball at least. Yeah, definitely. 
It looks pretty heavy, but not that heavy. Jim, when he fucking carried that, like, huge ball and chain around in Twilight Princess? Well, that was a different Link. Yeah, but still, that shit's heavy as hell. Yeah. I and mean, like, that, that Link was pretty much, like, the same size and shape as this one. That Link was a little more broad. I guess. And he had a... He had a dopey run animation, too. <laughs> that, too. But we did carry ten pumpkins at one point. We did. Ten pumpkins is probably quite heavy. That's probably- I'd say probably one pumpkin is probably even heavier than that crystal ball. Yeah. I mean, it depends on the size of the pumpkin. But a big pumpkin? They were yeah. big pumpkins. Yeah. For sure. Alright, now we know these things are really fragile, so just put, yes, put, put that... it down gently, carefully. Nice and careful. No! God damn it, Scrapper, what the fuck? He even raised his hands, like, right before he dropped it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that sound he makes in combination with the camera angle changing. <laughs> It's like a bit from a sitcom. Yeah, it looks like something out of Bill and Ted. <laughs> this guy and Link are later on, they're gonna climb into a telephone booth together. Whoa. <laughs> Man, the ways of go going back in time in Zelda just keep getting wilder and wilder. <laughs> Now that's how they should do it in the futuristic <laughs> cyberpunk Zelda that we've all definitely been waiting for. Yep. And what's worse, that the the phone booth is gonna be both the the time travel method and the instrument. You're gonna have to like push push in the numbers and then the sounds come out and that's how you play the songs <laughs> in that game. God. And also, it's bigger on the inside. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm special. That's why I got the red one. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, it depends what it is. Yeah, you, it's so rude to start your request off like that. And you also did like an awkward cough right before <laughs> yeah. you did it, so that makes me think like it's maybe something a little bit dodgy. Hey Link, I need you to do something for me, and I need you to agree to do it before I tell you what it is. So many fucking characters in this game have pulled that though. Like, <laughs> yeah, I guess. Link is so trusted. This is just one rung below that though. It's not quite as bad. Also, we just gotta find him like a cool plant. I do like how nobody ever comments about Fee just like appearing. Like, ever. Yeah. No one ever is like, holy shit, where did that lady come from? <laughs> they just like, watch her appear and then disappear and then they go back to just... doing their thing. Maybe they've all seen it before. Link's just the only one who's never seen it. Eh, uh, maybe. <laughs> I mean, we do know that he sleeps a lot, so maybe it just so happens that Feed like, goes around flying every night. Or every morning when he's asleep. Possibly. We'll never know about, like, what Fee does outside of traveling with Link. <laughs> yeah. What's she doing in that sword all the time? Just playing... for chance? I don't know. Solitaire. Yeah. <laughs> nah, it's true though, you don't have any shoulders. Yeah, no. This is a joke and also... It's a fact. <laughs> I mean, I guess technically he does, but they're not joints because, you know, he has he, he has a body above his arm, too. Yeah, he's just... his arms are just kind of glued on the sides of him. <laughs> yeah. So you may remember that uh, this kick we with a mohawk has, uh, in the past, me expressed multiple times that he's not too happy about living in Feral Woods because there's enemies all over the place. That's a valid reason why yeah, I wanted to live somewhere. Yeah, I'm surprised all the other kick are so cool with it, honestly. But yeah, this guy has decided that he'd, he'd much rather go up the Skyloft with us. I mean, it's not that they're cool with it, it's just like... 
the rest the rest of the kick we're just like, well it would move, but in the current climate, I mean. <laughs> yeah. If I buy a house now, I'm never gonna get my interest back. Exactly. Link, Link, you have a sword. Just like, just hit him. Just do it. <laughs> you don't have to hit him with the blade. <laughs> you can hit him with the handle. Uh, or even just slap him with the side. Yeah. It would only hurt him a little bit. He's a robot. I thought it wouldn't even hurt him at all, but it would teach him a lesson. Yeah. Don't be such a weenie. Scrapper is, in fact, a big weenie. Yeah. I don't know how Scarper's supposed to get into this building, but I guess he just does. Alright, now don't drop that boy. Yeah, please, if you drop him, I'll be so upset. I'll be so angry. Don't do don't it! You do no! Scrapper, oh have you- Oh my god! Scrapper, have you seen what their noses look like? They could probably break like that. <gasps> Christ, Scrapper. Man, Owlin, you really need to get out more. Yeah. We've met like a billion different types of <laughs> species of stuff. I mean, we've killed most of them, honestly, but... Yeah. These guys are cool. Yeah. But there's still like Octorok around. They're kind of weird too. They hide under brushes sometimes. Oh yeah, that's true. Just get yourself a sword and go explore out there. Is specimens the plural for specimen? I thought it was also just specimen. Yeah, you can you can use specimen as a plural of specimen or specimens. I think it's just always plural. No, wait, no, whatever. It doesn't matter that much, really. All that matters is that we got that kickway out of the environment where he didn't feel safe. Yeah. Although it is a shame that he didn't get to say goodbye to any of his friends. Because Scrapper just had to be such a go-getter. That's not how I would describe Scrapper. No. Well, anyway, we're on the Lumpy Pumpkin now. Whoa! Wow, stealth edit. <laughs> I told you I was going to be really aggressive with cutting around. That wasn't, very, that wasn't really very aggressive, that was quite... That was quite a gentle edit, really. Alright. I didn't yeah, realize so that it was different <laughs> until you pointed it out. It's me. <laughs> it, I'm stood right as me. I even have a sword. It would be kind of difficult, but you could probably plow a field with that. And magma mitts? Yeah, you could definitely do it with that. Yeah, you could do that. You could definitely do that. All right, we're gonna find a pumpkin or whatever that was. But no, Link's a busy man and we gotta go find someone else to go plow the pumpkin patch. And it looks like they're in the Ellen's Volcano as well. Huh. That is not where I would imagine someone who could grow crops well to live. Well, it's not about growing crops, it's just about preparing the field. Oh, okay. I mean... Oh, I think they're in the lava, that's the shame. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, wait, no. No, they're just in this cave. I mean, I guess the soil will be quite fertile here? I guess so, yeah. Yeah. Grow some pumpkins down here, why don't you? Although, yeah. I guess they would probably- they would rot real quick because of the uh, because of the heat. Hmm, yeah, probably true. Hey buddy, let me tell let me talk to you about my pumpkin enterprise. <laughs> my pumpkin timeshare. Yeah. <laughs> the 
this guy's actually uh, an ancestor of Joan. The turnip. Oh. <laughs> the turnip lady. Well, looks like we just missed him, because he's up there. Gosh dang it. Alright, ah. uh, it's okay, we'll get there in a bit, but first... Let's blow up this Kraken of all that's been here the whole game. But we couldn't get it uh, when we first came through, because we didn't have the bomb bag at the time. Oh man, what's inside? I'm so excited. What could it be? Oh. Yeah. That's alright, I guess. It, it's a little weird to me that uh, they give you the two heart medallions, mm. when there are plenty of places in the game that they could have put extra heart pieces. Anyway, let's try this again. Have you considered glasses? That might help. Maybe brushing your hair out of your eyes? <laughs> Getting a map. <laughs> Or maybe move to the desert. I hear they got a lot of valuable rocks out there. Mm. I hope the lumpy pumpkin's alright with employing a magma. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna hear this music in my nightmares. <laughs> this music is my nightmares. <laughs> Boy, dude! Whoa! We didn't say anything! <laughs> Jeez. He's- he sounds scared, actually. Yeah. Maybe we should put him back. Or maybe he's excited. I, I don't know why, but I really don't like the angle on Fee's face here. Yeah, it's a little weird. It, you never see her quite at the angle, and it's a little off-putting. Hmm. Unlike seeing this manga being carried, which is good. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Quit throwing stuff on the ground, man. Look at that guy's tiny legs. That must have hurt a lot. Oh. He could have broken something on that drop. Yeah, he's like, he's not exactly a young guy either, he's kind of old. No, and he's wearing, he's wearing those pots as well. Those might be valuable. You said you wanted to go for a ride. Mr. Mole Man, oh no. Oh, I guess he's alright with that. Yeah. All he's doing is digging through the dirt, it's not impressive. <laughs> well, she's really enamored with it. I think she's just trying to hype him up so that he'll do the work better. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> like, Link is onto this. Well, look at him go! Link's like, all right, but I'm gonna be coming back to check you giving him frequent breaks. Yeah, and like paying him. Yeah. This isn't free labor, lady. See, the whole Lumpy Pumpkin situation is a bit of a mess, because earlier <laughs> we also... Like, she was the one who was supposed to carry those pumpkins around, even though her dad is like seven feet tall and probably weighs 300 pounds, and would have a way <laughs> easier time doing that. Oh well. Before we leave, let's see what Beetle's been up to. What the hell's Beetle doing inside the Lumpy Pumpkin? Uh, I don't know. Well, you do I, that, my he man? needs a break sometimes, too. But why does the Lumpy Pumpkin look like Beetle's shop? Oh my goodness. I don't know. How did, how did this happen? Maybe there has been a merger of some kind. Yeah, okay, I can see that happening. Beetle's a businessman. He's been seeing some good returns lately, so... Yeah, I mean, look, he sold out. Yeah. Beetle sold out. <laughs> <laughs> Ever since he went to the sky, man. <laughs> He's never been the same. He says, oh, but his eyes are dead. <laughs> he says, oh, but his eyes say no. Yeah. <laughs> oh. 
The sleep sheep. The sleep sheep. That's a good name for an inn. It is. Also, we're probably just really heavy. We are carrying a lot of stuff. Yeah, we are. Sorry about that. The shield's really big. It is. How, what? How did you lose the cage? I mean, losing a bug, sure, they're tiny. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, that makes sense, but... Mm -hmm. The thing, if the thing is, he was just keeping the bug inside, like, a bird cage. <laughs> so it just crawled out. Maybe it's a really strong bug, so it's, it flew away with the cage. Maybe. Man, I hope that's not the case. That'd be terrifying. <laughs> yeah. We have to beat that beetle up. Uh, we're gonna go go on a bug hunt next episode. But the, we are clearly da dealing with a powerful and dangerous bug here. Quite clearly. So we have to upgrade our bug net for some next level bu bug catching shenanigans. A big bug net for a big bug. Yeah, that's right. Saw and screw us a new bug net somehow. Yeah, somehow. Wow, look at that thing. Yeah. It's got arrows on the inside like, this is the direction you go, boys. <laughs> You'll never forget which way to swing it. The arrows point to the outside, so never mind. Your thing <laughs> makes more sense. Alright, just one side quest left to do, and we're gonna do that next time. <laughs>